Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Harry. Today we are looking at the first, I think the first Canadian ship in the game. Which means I'm going to be apologizing a lot. Uh, because I think this is just customary at this point. So, um, this is HMCS Haida, a tier 7 premium Commonwealth destroyer. And the, she's currently in the Blitz Pass. Now, tier 7s are unusual to be in a Blitz Pass. It's usually tier 6 or tier 5. But, um, yeah. She's a tribal, or she was, no, she still is, actually, a tribal class destroyer. She was made, uh, she was built in, in the United Kingdom, and she has served both in the Second World War and in the Cold War. During the Korean War, for example, she was still actually busy. Now, during the Second World War, she's actually been fighting German destroyers and torpedo boats quite a bit in, in the Channel in preparation for Operation Overlord and, uh, and the D-Day invasions. And uh, she has actually sunk Z-32, I think, which is a 1936A design, so basically a Tier 8 destroyer. Well, well done then, I would say. And the Tribals were explicitly made to... Um, to combat more powerful Japanese and German destroyers. So as such, uh, if we're actually looking at at the tier 8, we have the Cossack, which is another tribal class, and uh, which also existed. And yeah, we're going to have to take a look at the comparison later. But yeah, the Haida is described as the fightingest ship in the Canadian Navy. And this is a new word. I haven't heard that before, but apparently she gets that uh, designation because she has sunk the most tonnage of all the ships in the history of the Royal Canadian Navy. The Haida actually survived both the Second World War and the Cold War and was preserved and is today a museum ship because eventually it turned out that her her hull was having cracks and, you know, you couldn't really use her anymore in in the later part of the century. But it's always good to see ships being preserved. And I think she's the only tribal class destroyer in the world that is still preserved. Uh, named after a um, named after a tribe of, na of uh, native inhabitants in a small island of the western coast of Canada. The Haida people. Who are known to be rather warlike. So, well, good, good description, I would say. Alright, um... Yeah, I, like I said, second tribal class, and we actually have the Cossack. So let's have a very quick look at the Haida and the Cossack, because the Cossack is, is a tier 8, tier 8 ship. If we compare these two, we are seeing that they, they are very similar in, in armor and everything else. The Cossack's more maneuverable. Uh, the Cossack's got... Eight guns, and that was a, uh, that was kind of what the Cossack was all about when she was introduced. She was, I think, the first ship. I could be wrong. I, I think the first ship with a fuel smoke, or was that the Hill at Tier Five, the American destroyer? I'm not sure which one came first. But she did have a fuel smoke and a lot of charges on that, and she was actually a very very good gunboat. So with the Cossack, it was all about the guns, setting fires, and this kind of things. Now, the Haida's guns, even though they are Exactly the same guns on paper, which makes sense because she is a uh, she's she's the same class of destroyer. Actually, hit harder, not by a huge by a huge amount, but a little bit. They reload faster, but they have a lower fire chance, and the, you only get six of them. Now, the reason you only get six of them is because the Haida historically had her X turret, so the uh, the the third from the front, if you count removed and replaced by a 100mm AA gun, well, dual-purpose gun, really, which was supposed to be boosting her AA power a little bit, and, well, we, we don't get to use the 100 mils necessarily on a destroyer in against other ships, even though in reality that would have been perfectly possible. And while the main guns were theoretically AA-powered, they were... Uh, they only had an elevation of about 40 degrees, which wasn't enough to shoot at airplanes that were actually attacking the destroyer. That's not what, that's not what they ever were meant, to were meant to do either. They were meant to defend fleet groups from low-flying aircraft that were attacking uh, the capital ships. But anyway, so um, 
shorter range, one, uh, two, one, tw one twin turret fewer, but they do hit slightly harder. Now, she, just like the Cossack, she gets one, uh, she gets one quadruple torpedo launcher because these were not torpedo boats; these were destroyer hunters. And um, yeah, the torpedoes are distinctly worse than on the Cossack. They have a longer reload. They have they do less damage. They have a significantly shorter range, and a smaller chance of flooding. Even though again, they are on paper exactly the same torpedoes. Uh, when it comes to AA, like I said, one of her turrets has been changed into a 102mm gun and that uh, is reflected here in a large caliber AA. Now the problem is 23 points of damage on large caliber AA isn't going to make any difference. So effectively we can, it, it doesn't make a difference at all. Um, uh, she, she can't shoot any planes down. Concealment wise, she's slightly better than the Cossack. Now the Cossack wasn't was a good ship, or still is a good ship. The thing is, uh, this uh, the Cossack predates the introduction, and this is where I'm going to start with the apologizing bit. The Cossack predates the introduction of the British destroyer line. So if we are actually going to compare the Haida not to the Cossack but to the Jervis, the Tech Tree Tier Seven British destroyer, uh, things are getting a little more questionable. So the Jervis also has the fuel smoke. She gets, uh, Jerv Jervis gets four charges, Haida gets three. Jervis gets single fire torpedoes and, uh, and a hydro, and the Haida gets an engine boost. Given that the Haida was explicitly more or less made as a destroyer hunter of sorts, I, would, I think I like the utility on the Jervis better. And we start looking at the statistics. Uh, the Haida has uh, more hit points than Jervis, but that's about where it ends. Uh, she is just a smidgen faster than Jervis, and obviously with the engine boost she can go around a little bit fast, quicker. But Jervis has better engines and acceleration. She turns, well, she turns noticeably better than Haida. Uh, Jervis, once again, has the exact same guns, the thing is, they have a better range and they have a 3% fire chance. Whereas on Haida, even though you get a one second faster reload, um, you only have a 2% fire chance and, uh, and a slightly shorter range. And yes, they do a little bit more damage, but it's not a large margin. The torpedo tubes, uh, well, the, the, the high, the, they, are the ident they are identical torpedoes. The Haida's reload uh, 7 seconds quicker. The difference being that the Jervis gets 10 of them and they're single fired and the Haida gets four. <laughs> and when it comes to AA, uh, yeah, once again, the, the Haida has the very, very slight edge due to losing one of the one of the guns for the AA gun. But you're in tier seven, uh, 23 points of damage on large caliber AA isn't going to make any dent in a plane whatsoever. So I, I, I'm going to have to say I'm sorry, but... Uh, if I look at this graph, this graph really tells you all. The Haida is, in all possible manners, inferior to her tech tree comp uh, uh, companion, the Jervis. I mean, the Jervis is in the tribal class, I think. But this, I, I see, I see how we got here. We kind of got here from a down-tiered Cossack, but um, the Haida is, unfortunately, and I'm very sorry to say that because I think it's just a great ship. Uh, not like a great ship in reality, not a very, very good ship here. So let's have a quick look and see what I've done equipment wise. Uh, I have put the main battery mod 2 in because you really have to rely on your guns to do the work. You have four torpedoes and they're not single fire. I have the propulsion mod because her acceleration isn't great to begin with. And instead of concealment, I actually have uh, the speed modification to give her a little bit more speed because the one thing, the only thing you can really do in the Haida is sail around and try to, um, well, shoot at people with your guns. <laughs> They're 120 millimeter, so the armor piercing is going to be working against destroyers only at close range, uh, which means at most of the times you're actually going to be firing high explosive and 1% less fire chance than you have on the Jervis or on the Cossack. Uh, elite bonus, uh, you can either take torpedo damage and torpedo flooding chance, but I really, really needed to have the turret traverse because with that, she, she gets a 14.4 degrees per second, which isn't super quick for a destroyer. And um, other than that, it would have just been 
too 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 low and I can't use the module because I need the reload, which gets us down to 4.75 seconds. Which still means, yes, she's a gunboat. Um, and then that's pretty much all you can do in this ship. All right. Commander wise, skill wise, I have put a level seven commander in here. Uh, nothing surprising, really. Torpedo alert, uh, preheating, victorious charge, daredevil, exploit weakness, because, well, you are going to have to try and set fires. That's your only way of, of, of doing damage, really. Uh, fully prepared and uh, yeah. with three charges I would, of the fuel smoke, I would say you don't even need the Mistweaver, probably because um, it, it, it made a lot of sense on the Cossack, because not so much for the actual duration, because this is a short-lived fuel smoke that you can take along with you, but for the cooldown, because this reduces the cooldown by a third, and with the Cossacks, well, it's like five charges or so, means you can just use them more frequently. So this is not a smoke you sit in, this is a get out of dodge or, or, um, or rush people smoke. Now with the Cossack, the same thing, you can't actually rush anybody, because you only have four torpedoes, you're not a torpedo boat. But you could cover yourself in turns and, you know, do things like um, more dangerous maneuvers for, for a couple of seconds to get into, into a better position. So here with three, I think it's, it's, it, you wouldn't actually need it. All right, um, what else do we have to look at? Camo. Now, the historical camo gives us better range, both on the main battery and on the torpedoes. She can stealth torp. The problem is she's got almost a minute reload and only four torpedoes. So you're not going to be playing torpedo board in this thing. Uh, it, it also improves the max traverse speed, which is good because she is a little bit sluggish on the rudder. But uh, again, I needed the speed because with that setup, we get to 37 knots. And if I have to gunboat and... Uh, the guns aren't great, then speed's all I got, really. So, what else do we have? Um, uh, battle honors. 10 battles and destroy two enemy destroyers. So that's, and that's entirely doable. All right. So, what, what are we going to do with this thing? Um, I don't know. I mean, th there are two kinds of battles you can get yourself into, right? There's the... Uh, th there's the normal battle where you're going to do 20, 30,000 points of damage and that's it. Because let's let's be honest here, uh, th there's, just so, there's just only so much you can do with the ship compared to something like the Jervis. Or you can get yourself into a battle that's com it's a complete derp fest. <laughs> and you can actually do reasonably well, but you do need the assistance of the enemy team to do so. So the way the hide-up works is by... Um, politely asking the enemy team to please do some stupid things so you can get something done. Let's see how that looks like in practice. In the first battle we're actually in a tier 8 game and we're playing on the Atlantic map. There's a carrier in play and one, two, three, four destroyers on the enemy team. Kagero, Aka, Sims and another Aka. And we do have a team with our Shokaku here on on the uh, on our side so hopefully uh, that doesn't go too far too much sideways because we're gonna need we're gonna have to rely on some spotting so four destroyers most most of most likely one of them is going to come around that island over there now the original like i said the original hide up was somewhat of a destroyer hunter and was was quite successful taking on german torpedo boats and destroyers and this is pretty much what you want to do in this thing as well uh, you're not really equipped to deal with things like battleships and you don't have much utility but the guns aren't completely terrible for tier 7 and you can you can take on destroyers of your own tier or tier 8 if you're if you're smart about it all right so uh, engine boost has expired which means we're back down to 38 knots and the first destroyer first two destroyers are spotted by the carrier and uh, we're still we're still just heading over to this corner here because most likely something is going to come around there, and we have no scouting now. I, this is not a stealth build; this is a speed build, because otherwise you would do much less than thirty uh, than thirty seven knots, which we're almost doing here, and you do need the speed. So, kinda getting into position here just in case someone comes around. I, I'm not planning to torpedo enemy destroyers, but. Um, 
mostly I'm just going to rely on my guns here. So just getting in position in case they come around right on the right at the edge of the island. That's when I might be using my torpedoes. Oh, there's the cargo. Okay, hello cargo. Uh, I seem to have outspotted the cargo, which is uh, which is unusual. But yeah, let's let's get some shots out. So five kilometer about or aboutish is where you want to use the armor piercing because it does a reasonable amount of damage. Now there come the cargo torps, and of course while he's busy firing torps at me, I'm t I'm chipping away at his health. But um, there you see you start getting semi pens at about eight kilometers. So that's when I'm switching over to the high explosive. Now there's Colorado over there. High explosive dem um, penetration isn't bad, so you can as well, you, you may as well use it uh, against destroyers. Okay, uh, using the first fuel smoke charge here, um, just to drop some torpedoes. Colorado looks like he's reversing, and uh, we're just pushing him away really at this point. Uh, and as you see, your, your fuel smoke doesn't last long, so I will be spotted again in a second. There I am. I don't think these torpedoes are going to hit. Nah, he's he's accelerated again, so that's all. Uh, you you don't want to rush a battleship in this thing because you only have four torpedoes. And I fire my four torpedoes into the Colorado. The Colorado says, "Okay." <laughs> and what was your plan going forward? <laughs> so I'm trying to set the Colorado on fire, but of course, with a two percent fire chance, this might take a while. Uh, but I'm quite happy with him just being not here <laughs> and leaving us alone because, by the looks of it, one of the destroyers has actually gone through the center. And I haven't really been paying attention, but it looks like our carrier, yeah, it has to deal with a destroyer in our in our own home cup now. So uh, I'm making my way back because, uh, yeah, I think we're going to need to defend if that goes sideways. There comes some cargo torps. He's sitting behind the island, probably. I have time for this right now. Uh, you, North Carolina, top tier battleship. Would would you mind? Oh, there's a destroyer. Okay, I'm gonna help the DNC against that Akka, and uh, given that we're rushing him, I'm gonna go back to the armor piercing and see what we can do. Uh, there come some, come some planes. I don't have time for those. Uh, come on, uh, great AA, go shoot something down. Um, yeah, not really happening, is it? Oh no, I shot an aircraft down. Hey. <laughs> Okay, Aka is dropping the Colorado. I think he's, given the fact that I'm starting to take him, uh, sorry, uh, North Carolina, that I'm taking him under fire, he is somewhat, um, he was somewhat afraid of, of doing a complete rush. And But it looks like the NC has completely dodged that. And uh, still firing armor piercing at the, <laughs> at the destroyer though. But uh, yeah, the Sims takes out our, our carrier, which means, uh, yeah, could, would, you, would you mind helping out down there? Uh, because we are going to get capped out otherwise. So Carrier is doing a couple more drops, but most importantly is keeping Yaka spotted. And the Sims is... well, he's not in the cap circle. I'm not sure where the Sims is. Uh, did they kill each other? It's possible that they killed each other. So um, so it's just the Yaka in this case that we need to deal with, which means I just, gonna, I just have to keep this guy spotted. And um, yeah, he's, uh, he's running. Which means, given that I have two turrets forward, I can actually just run after him and keep shooting him. And um, this is kind of the way you want to do this. Uh, you know, if you have to, if you have to dogfight enemy destroyers, just run after them. Uh, keep keep your bow, keep keep nose in in case they are, um, in case they are torping. And because of the speed setup, I can actually. Well, I can't really keep up with an uh, with an Akatsuki, but uh, I can kinda. All right, he's dropped torps at this point. I know this because he's turned broadside on, which uh, there are the torps. But because I'm already in the right position, all I need to do is slow down a little bit and dodge those torps. And then we're going to have that thing killed in a second. Okay, he's turning. The guns are reasonably precise. And there we go. Uh, Akan defeated, cap secured, which means we are one kill ahead. And now it's just up to our team not to stuff this up. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be getting um, I'm going to be getting anywhere near the enemy cap circle or anything to shoot at really at this time. So let's just um, yeah fast forward a little bit towards the end here. And we win. The Sims uh, takes takes the MVP because we had to turn back and do defense duty. So um, she does work reasonably well against enemy destroyers if they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> 
uh, if they do, that's a very different story because you don't have any utility. Now, how about other things? How about you? What, what do you do when you're fighting cruisers or stuff like that? Well, once again, you are in a Canadian ship. So the first thing you do at the beginning of the battle is to ask the enemy team to please um, le leave their brains at the entrance <laughs> and do some stupid stuff. That's the only way how you're going to be super successful. So here we are in a tier 6 game. And once again, it's a carrier game. We're playing Epicenter and Frozen Shelter. We've got Independence, Fuso, Ismail, Miyoko, Trento, uh, Fubuki and Fushun. Okay, then. So what do we do? Being a top tier destroyer, uh, well, we're going to head into the center, obviously, and see what we can do from over there. Other than, well, literally just trying to capture it. So that's again where the speed setup comes kind of helpful in. Uh, we'll switch over to the armor piercing because we might be hitting destroyers first. Get up to speed and kick the engine boost in and with the preheating and the engine boost and the speed module she does a very respectable almost 43 knots. So for these kind of maps you can get yourself into position reasonably quickly. The problem obviously is that you don't have the torpedo power to defend them but um, uh, I have the slight benefit here that nobody knows yet how many torpedoes I have. <laughs> so <laughs> oftentimes in battles like this, uh, you'll find that uh, you, you'll find that people just don't push into you because they think you've got torpedoes and they don't know that my single spread that they've seen me firing was all I had. But uh, the enemy destroyers seem not to be inclined to go into the center cup, which suits me just fine. So I'm going to grab that and then use the, and then just park myself next to that island there because there are two pretty dangerous cruisers out there. Was it a Trento and a Miyoko? I uh, do not necessarily want to tussle with those. But for now, I'm just going to grab myself the center cup and then my engine uh, my engine boosts on cooldown and uh, my preheating's expired. So I can just kind of tuck myself in here, use a little wedge here. Because yeah, there come the there come the predictive sp uh, blind, blind blind spreads, and there comes the fushun. Uh, okay, fushun is not uh, in any way of form a danger to me as long as he doesn't use his guns, which are excellent. But he doesn't seem inclined to do so, so um, he just wants to sail around <laughs> and rush headfirst into our into our team while I'm shooting at him, and he's sitting fully broadside on. Now. Um, I still have to be careful because there's Fubuki over there, so Fushun is probably going to die in a second or so because he seems to just blindly sail into the countryside, so let's start opening up for Fubuki. Now Fubuki can hit me with torpedoes and his torp should be off cooldown reasonably soon. At uh, this distance, I'm, uh, yeah, you start, I'm seeing to bounce, bounce my AP off the Fubuki, so I'm switching over to high explosive. And um, yeah, I'm just sitting there, <laughs> shooting at Fubuki, which isn't doing anything. I mean, he's, he's also, oh, he's not even, a, oh yeah, oh, he was waiting for his torpedoes to reload. Oh, well, <laughs> good luck with that. Um, um, maybe there's a destroyer behind me. You, you, you've seen, you know that there's a Fubuki, right? And he's been spotted for the better part of 15, 15 minutes and you're not going to be hit by those torps, okay? Yeah, thank you. Okay, but we're just sitting here and the Fubuki is, is not making any attempts to, to get close either. Uh, to, my, to my eternal surprise, the Fushun's still alive. Which just means that uh, there are two teams here and the Fuso is joining us in the center cup. Okay, I think I don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> uh, okay, so the, fu the, uh, the Fushun is finally dead, uh, which just leaves the Fubuki, who is rushing straight into our carrier and battleships. Um, so the Trento doesn't seem to be inclined to shoot at me either. My torpedo is not going to hit anything because these guys are reversing out. Oh, no, there he is. Okay, engine boost up and he missed. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, our carrier is reasonably low on on uh, on health, and uh, there's just two battleships and a carrier back here. So, in, 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 just in case um, they they don't re ow, that was the Trento. <laughs> just in case they don't really, you can't even see me. Nice shot, nice shot. They don't really know how to deal with that Fubuki, or they just missed him. So I'm gonna start actually. Uh, yeah, because I think the carrier is now dead. Well done. <laughs> There's another torpedo spread, don't mind, don't care. Uh, oh, our reinforced AA has shot another plane down, well done. But yeah, let's kill that, fu let's kill that Fubuki just so he doesn't go and stealth up and um, and uh, deal some more damage to the battleships. Okay, that's the Fubuki dead. 
Because honestly, I wasn't needed in the center cup anyway, because nobody really cared about the center cup of the enemy team. <laughs> so uh, now we are halfway through the battle, and the question just remains: um, Are we going to are we going to win on points before I get to kill anything? So let's uh, let's head back into the outer ring for starters. Okay, we've just lost the Hatsuharu, so we're back on. No, we're even on ships, but we're ahead on points because we've been holding. Well, two out of three cups, and soon three out of three cups, because the enemy team doesn't seem to be very interested to get into the capture circle. Um, not sure what that battleship's doing over there. Uh, but uh, let's let's head towards him as as fast as our little ship will go. Okay, that's the cup secured. Enemy team isn't capping, so um, are you AFK? He can't be AFK, right? I mean, he definitely moved because he's not in a starting position, but he doesn't seem to be moving. So either he's AFK or he's just sitting there waiting for his guns to reload. Uh, no, the guns are, aren't even pointing in anyone's direction. I think he went AFK. Okay, so that's an AFK Fuso, so we don't really need to worry about this thing. Um, let's attack. Okay, the Trento takes out one of our Fusos. All right, this, I mean, if uh, Trento and Miyoko are still alive, so, I mean, he, he already killed one Fuso. <laughs> All right, let's let's help the Fuso. Trento, oi, yo. Fuso, if you, if you wouldn't mind just shooting the Trento, I mean, he's suicide rushing you, but if you wouldn't mind just shoot, shooting him, um, I think Fuso might have gone AFK as well. <laughs> I don't know. But he's not moving or shooting, so I'm going to kill the Trento. Uh, which means I am going to have to do something that you normally shouldn't be doing, which is just uh, rushing a cruiser. But he's on reasonably low health, so hopefully I can kill him before he gets another salvo off. Yep, he's dead. Alright, which leads to Miyoko. And since our Fuso is probably AFK, I'm going to have to kill that thing as well. And my, my fuel smoke cool is on cooldown, so... Uh, but yeah, the Miyoko doesn't pay any attention to me right now, so I can just drop some torpedoes on him. And then I probably want to go nose in. Uh, the Miyoko's torps are on cooldown, and he's noticed me. Yep, he's noticed me. Okay, put her in reverse, bow in, forward guns out. And uh, now I just need a perma fire on the Miyoko, and then he's dead. And uh, just turn the nose into the ship. Uh, I mean, Miyoko at this distance is very dangerous, but... Uh, uh, it doesn't look like our battleships are in any way or form interested in actually shooting at the Miyoko, so... <laughs> um, yeah, but he's on fire, and can I kill... No, we run out of points, I would have killed him, there, there he explodes, kaboom. <laughs> I feel robbed! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, this is how you can have a good game in the hide up. <laughs> if your enemy team is in 100% derp mode <laughs> and completely follows your polite suggestion to just please bumble around the countryside, not care about the center cup in epicenter, and just generally do silly things. That's how you can do reasonably amounts of damage in the high And Honestly, I think this was my best game in the high dive by, by a long shot. <laughs> so, um, in conclusion, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to apologize. Uh, because to the Canadians and to everybody who uh, felt like they wanted to have this ship in the Blitz Pass, um, it, it really is a below average destroyer all in all. Uh, she's outclassed by her tech tree, well, I wouldn't say equivalent, but uh, by the British tier 7 uh, tech tree destroyer. She's obviously outclassed by the Cossack at tier, at tier 8, which is okay because that's a tier 8, but even the Cossack has been somewhat power crept. And uh, should you get the Blitz Pass? Well, it's up to you because the Blitz Pass doesn't just contain the Hyder. It contains resources and all kinds of things. And so if you think that this is something you want to do, by all means, go for it. Uh, if, you, if you were just interested to get the Hyder, personally, I wouldn't, um, unless you are either Canadian or extremely uh, an extreme fan of this ship and really, really wanted to have uh, the Hyder in game. But uh, for, for playing her, um, she's, she's just not very good, I have to say. And I'm really sorry to say that. So that's all the apologizing I'm going to be doing today. And uh, that's it. I hope I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.